You don't know what you're encountering. Um, how bad is your training right now? Like, I know you're you're getting ready Friday night. We're recording on a Wednesday last time I checked. Uh, so you've got a couple of days. You're now at the point of way inch. Are they going to be tomorrow or same day? Are they going to be in gi or do you get to go without the gi? Um, yeah, these are, these are nice, friendly wings. You weigh in the day before, and you get to weigh in an underpants. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> How great. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, straight way in. So there's plenty of food and plenty of rehydrating involved. How – how uh, you have a job during the day. Um, how is your training at night? Are you doing, like, a morning session and working in a midday session, or is it all just two or three straight hours at night? Yeah, at night, it's about – Three and a half, three and a half, almost four hours some nights. So, uh, I, but I like it that way. You know, I train forever. Even uh, one of my former sessions, I guess, shout out to a guy named Leo Perez and Joe Enos because they really helped me out. They kind of gang jumped me. They're both really good black belts, and they just teamed up on me. And I got a little Shark Tank action, had to stay in the middle the whole time, and they just went back to back to back, roughing me up for a while. But you know, some nights that's training, you know, <laughs> and, and that's what you need to do you know, to prepare yourself. Now, you does, get, uh, get, uh, does George make you work with the kids, too? Do you actually get to be a coach and train? Yes, I have coached in multiple facets, and even for a while, I think, after I was a purple belt, I did coaching for about a year straight, but I've kind of withdrawn from coaching just a little bit, only because I'm really kind of focusing on myself. Like I said, I'd, I'd oh, like sure. to fight this year. I just turned 26, so, you know, you don't want to be in your prime and not take full advantage of it. I agree. Uh, you know, he's always, always said a champion has to be a little bit selfish. So, you know, I don't – I never uh, – any student will tell you if they ask me to stay after, you know, they need some extra help. I'm going to be like, you know, I like to help people with everything. And you look at people as individuals and share different things to help their, um, you know, their individual parts of their game. But at the same time, you know, like having a competition like this coming up, you know, you're going to be on the main stage, like the full wrestling TV. So I, you know, I am very focused on myself right now and my development, but still the whole way I've been helping other people out and definitely receive a lot of help from others. So. What's, uh, okay, so we'll we'll end everything. Again, that's yeah, Friday. Here, I'm sorry, I touch kids. So I'm sorry, I had to play through that. But yes, I no, 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 you're doing fine. Um, so again, you're fighting on fight to win pro 26 in Denver. Go watch it on. I'm sure it's on flow sports. Everything's on flow sports. Um, so you can go and watch this fight. Uh, I'll give you the, the real, we'll end it on the, give me your best, uh, one tag liners, uh, or your thoughts on certain topics. The, the lightning round of questions, um, takedown. What is your, what is the go-to takedown that everybody should have in their arsenal? You don't know what it is. Uh, you take a shot. You get someone's hands to rise. You know, you'll put your hands right in front of them. The second their hands rise up, you hit them with a blast double. Crowd post, everyone should have it. Put it in your arsenal. If you're going to use it, I've hit it from white belt. And I'm not a black belt yet, but I've hit it on black belts. So, you know, use that the whole time. All right. Uh, let's talk from the guard position. You were talking about Spider earlier. Uh, what is your go-to uh, submission? Is it uh, try- what? What is your go-to submission from either sides of the guards? Periods. Okay, uh, go-to submission. Now, if it's just from closed guard, I'll open up briefly. I fake a hip bump. You get someone that posts back as almost as if they were defending. You know, the hip bump to gain balance, and then you shoot your leg over top, and that would be the hip bump triangle. And shout out to Ryan Hall for inventing that. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, what's your go-to choke? What is, or what is the choke that every grappler should know? Every grappler needs to know a cross-collar choke from guard, and they need, uh, need to know a cross-collar choke from top. You know, I believe just by getting those two simple mechanics down, you're setting yourself up for great jiu-jitsu all along your career. You're going to know how to tuck your elbows in different positions, whether you're hitting baseball bat chokes, clock chokes, different things like that. So early on in your career, get used to cross collars because they will apply to so much longer way. I agree. Um, just because it happened recent, it just happened for me the other day. It actually happened on the mat for me the other day, and I was shocked at how simple it was. Um, moment. It was a big moment, and I had no one to really share it with. 
because hey, the minute I was with me, I told you. <laughs> the funny part was I was going to tell my professor, and he just looked at me and he said, "Are are you gonna do the circuit training after class?" Yeah. <laughs> um, he's very direct. He well, here's the thing. I'm 48 and I'm lazy too, and I get that. I'm very unique among my age group in that place. The only guy who's kind of close is a brown belt. And, uh, you know, that's the guy teaching the Monday, Wednesday, Friday day class. And he pushes himself extremely hard and he pushes us extremely hard. And he's older than me, but I defy anybody above the age of 40. I, there, I almost believe that there's something going on above the age of 40. Um, for people who want to take up jujitsu. And I don't think that, anybody's mentally prepared for what that's going to look like. Cause it's going to hurt. What was your first injury? Oh, ooh, my first injury, but uh, torn my groin. And, uh, oh. I think my first injury was actually breaking my wrist. I broke my wrist. I've broken both wrists about three times, Matt, both ankles. Uh, my knees come out of place. Every finger on my right hand is broken. I have two fingers on the left hand that are broken. I've got one. Uh, yeah. In six I'm, months, I'm I've managed to... to get it all pretty much. Really? Yeah, no, I've got uh, my left ring finger is completely out of whack. Um, now, six years. Now, here's the, the kicker. Six years of wrestling, one year, uh, 18 months of boxing, a couple of years of hop keto, and then I did MMA for about a year. Didn't get one bit of cauliflower. I'm telling you, in the first six months here, I've got cauliflower sprouting like I'm starting a farm. Like, it's no. crazy, the difference. I'm just going to knock on wood because I'm a brown belt right now, and I don't have a lick of cauliflower here. Well, and I think it comes down to ears, too, and ear type. I mean, that's a thing. But, yeah. Well, I have some Will Smith ears. You would think that they would have. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely have the howdy-doody ears, so they stick out. But, no, my finger, my shoulder, uh, both knees are a little rickety. Um, and I've got a hip and a foot thing happening right now. And again, I think most of them are stress related because I'm pushing it right to the edge. Hard to say. Uh, okay. Uh, we've covered chokes. We've covered sweeps. We've covered you. You are a spider guard guy. I am, uh, just uncomfortable in guard still. I don't get it. it for me, this is maybe the wrestler thing, making that transition of, I want to be up. I want to be on my knees. I got to snap the knees down. I want to pass the guard. I don't even want to spend time in a guard. Um, and my brain doesn't, but my body is old and it finds guard very comfortable. I must say. <laughs> well, it is. It, I, I tell people all the time, what other sport can you do while you're sitting in your butt? You know, <laughs> so guard, uh, guard has always been a home to me. What's your go-to drill? What's the drill that all people should be doing in the gym? What's your favorite drill? Arm drag drills. You always want to take the backs. Taking the back is so important, you know, and it applies to wrestlers as well. So it's something that that's comfortable and transferable. So I, agree. I always like to hit some arm drag drills and then follow those up with arm drag takedowns. Are they? Here's a question because I haven't seen it in my gym, and I don't bring it up because I'm a snot nosed white belt, and I'm not allowed to. And that's no <laughs> knock on my coaches or my professor. That's just me being respectful of the situation. Do you guys run circle drills where you're doing sprawl on top and spinning around? Yes, we do. Okay, we don't do those. And I'm always intrigued and by I've, that. And I've trained at multiple schools, so, you know. It's I've not a common George one. That's, I wonder what? if that's, uh, you've got a lot of grapplers there. Because that's a grappler-specific thing. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. I, I actually don't know. And, you know, I've traveled around. And I've, I've seen people do a lot of different drills. I told you, I've trained with the soft team, which is George. I've trained with the yeah. Lions team, which is where I'm at right now in, in uh, I'm Chicago. And then uh, Rafael Lovato, he's, uh, he's who Ryan Walden is under out in Colorado. So, you know, and funny enough, even between these different teams, I've seen a lot of people do similar drills. So everyone acts like, oh, team to team, it's so different, you know. But I really do believe, like, you know, what you see out in competition is what a lot of schools are really going back and drilling. So maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't put that on yourself as a white belt. Maybe you should introduce it to your coach and tell him a lot of schools are doing it. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> very happy with where I am. Um, well, yeah, and th that's a very specific question. 
Does where you're at right now in Chicago, do they have specific MMA lines as compared to JIT lines? No, no. Right now we are doing a lot of pure jiu-jitsu training, but only because people are getting ready for competition right now. So, uh, you know, they just did the Atlanta Open out here. So, you know, obviously it's just very specific sport jiu-jitsu training. But like I said, as I'm going up for this fight to win rule set, you know, that's what's going to be beneficial to me. But obviously with George, he was a, you know, he was an MMA fighter himself. So he'll always give you that perspective like, hey, do this from a jiu-jitsu perspective. But from an MMA perspective, either you'd like to add this or, you know, transition X, Y, or Z way. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I, And what I've seen now out of traditional jiu-jitsu schools, they seem to be, I guess the word correctly would be matriculating the real MMA guys out. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. The MMA now should be its own classification of training. It is a unique creature. Um, I, you know, watching guys like Dominic Cruz who are taking it to an art level where you are, you're able to strike, you're able to do the kickboxing and you're able to submit the, these guys have now taken it to a different point in the sports because now we're generationally talking about guys who have started at 17, 18 or 19, combining all three or four of these disciplines. Um, and it sounds like to me, you're still very much in mainstream BJJ Gracie Gracie BJJ which is what 99% of us are all doing at some level oh yeah and you know but you have to love it and like I said everyone's different you know you just find what your passion's in and obviously I love I love hitting people I love getting hit in the face as well but you know I've just you know found such camaraderie in the game found so many good people and like I told you I love I love nogi grappling, take nogi classes every week as well. But, uh, and, you know, I teach nogi classes occasionally, but I just, I just really have found so much positivity in the gi and training in that way. Yeah. Even on my worst days, I go and train a little bit. Things where you feel like nothing in your life is going right. You just train on the gi a little bit, and you have so many people who show you so much support and who are so friendly to you, and, you know, you can't help but bounce back. You know, there's no way to be sad with a frown on your face after a gi class. I agree. I agree completely. Okay, so what's your advice to anybody who's thinking about taking BJJ? Okay, to men, my advice, and this is just, I'm splitting it up between men and women in my advice. Is this so everyone takes jiu-jitsu. Men, 90% of all fights wind up on the ground in case they're a one-punch knockout. So unless you have that one-punch knockout power or, you know, you can never depend on it, even Anthony Johnson doesn't even knock everyone out in one punch. So I suggest you get on a mat, train some jiu-jitsu. And for all women out there, I I know so many women want to take kickboxing. You know, they think kickboxing looks a lot cooler. You know, it's more fun. And you don't want to roll around with a sweaty guy. But, one, I guarantee you another woman's not going to attack you on the street. So you have to get used to standing with guys. <laughs> and it's, it's true. And it's also, true. women have less bone density than men. You know, if you don't believe in anything else, believe in some science. You know, believe in some fat. Women have less bone density Chances are, if you punch a man and you don't hit him right in the chin and you hit him in the forehead, you could break your hand, you know, and not be able to further defend yourself. So I suggest you get some ground skills, you know, because that'll be what's most effective in a true street battle. And usually if a man's grabbing you, you know, and if they've already gotten the grab on you, I suggest you learn some grappling, you know. And obviously I have sisters, so I, I pray that no man is grabbing up my sister because, they, you know, they wouldn't exist for very long. <laughs> but, you know. But still, it's sad. It's the world we live in. But you do have to have some kind of training and preparation nowadays. The prepared mind is the victorious mind. Uh, if I was picking a school, now you and I both had very unique situations where we wound up in competition facilities. Plus, the other side of that spectrum is these sort of pop-up fly-by-nighty, we teach everything, including Brazilian jiu-jitsu strip mall things. And I want to <laughs> make... I want to make it clear that is not anything like Gracie Barra's or even the Gracie Academy, which are more of the mainstream lines. But how important is it to research your professor and look at his background uh, when you're selecting a school? It is very important. It is and it's imperative because let's say you go to one of these schools and you have a coach who says he's X, Y, and Z. You never research it. You go out in competition. 
let me tell you, if that person doesn't know exactly what they're uh, what they're getting into and what they're getting you into, you know, you can go out 